Blasters. Vibro swords. Slug throwers. Weapons of Star Wars. Although we've already devoted a video to discussing lightsabers, the grand majority of fighting done in the Star Wars universe is done with more conventional weaponry. Ranging from the common smuggler's blaster pistol to the trooper's heavy rifles, Star Wars is filled with countless armaments designed to stun, kill, or disintegrate. I'll attempt to showcase many of the more common and more interesting weapons in this video, but be aware that there are many I won't be able to cover. First, let's begin with blasters. Blasters covers a wide range of weapons that utilize a special type of gas that was converted into a high-density particle beam. This beam, commonly referred to as a blaster bolt, was then fired from the blaster as a burst of glowing energy. This caused heat to build up in the blaster, potentially overheating it if fired in rapid succession, and also causing a distinctive smell akin to burnt meat. The bolt itself did not emit any heat, but upon contact with an object produced a large amount of kinetic energy that could deform materials, instantly convert liquids to steam, blast apart stone, and do tremendous damage to living tissue. Most blasters utilized a gas cartridge that formed the bolts and a power cell that provided the energy. Depending on the type of blaster, more or less gas would be used per shot and more or less energy was consumed by the weapon, thus differing the longevity of the ammunition. In addition, many blasters contained a stun setting that overloaded a target's nervous system, causing instantaneous unconsciousness. The earliest blasters, reverse-engineered from ancient weapons, were heavy artillery weapons used by militaries. Eventually, a more portable version was designed, albeit requiring a cable to be run from the weapon to a backpack power generator. These would be slightly improved upon and used for many thousands of years, until the Mandalorian Wars brought the more commonly known form of a blaster, completely self-contained. Blaster pistols, as their name implies, were small, handheld blasters ranging in size and power. Ownership was regulated on many planets, but were quite common, being used by civilians, criminals, and soldiers. Blaster rifles, on the other hand, were much more powerful than the pistols, and were illegal for civilian use in most systems. Blaster rifles were the typical weapon of most soldiers, including clone troopers and storm troopers. There were also repeating blasters that could fire a continuous spray of bolts in a short amount of time. These were often heavier weapons that would be mounted on vehicles and tripods by the military, but there were also much less common personal repeating blasters capable of being wielded by a single soldier. The Mandalorians were particular fond of these during the Mandalorian Wars. There were, of course, variations on the blaster, notably the disruptor pistol and rifle. These weapons worked similarly to blasters, but used massive amounts of blaster gas for each shot, creating an extremely powerful pulse of energy. This wave actually destroyed the bonds between atoms of a target, literally disintegrating humanoid targets and doing massive damage to inorganic materials. Due to the large amount of gas used for each shot, disruptors could only be used sparingly and were illegal in the grand majority of systems. Ownership in most cases resulted in an immediate death sentence, but they were used by certain bounty hunters and assassins. Moving away from blaster weapons, many more conventional weapons were used by various armies, including missile launchers, flamethrowers, mortars, and explosives. Handheld grenades came in many different varieties, including concussion, flashbang, gas, chemical, and EMP grenades that disabled electronics and droids. But most notable was the thermal detonator. Inside the detonator shell, which was generally made of thermite, was a highly volatile substance capable of causing a destructive fusion reaction. Depending on the detonator's design, this reaction could vaporize targets up to 100 meters away, leaving anything even slightly beyond its blast radius unharmed. Thermal detonators became fairly common in the later days of the Republic, with many criminals and bounty hunters using them despite their illegality. In addition, various armies would also use them, 
to either kill a group of targets or to cause massive damage to inorganic materials. Of course, blasters weren't the only projectile weapons used throughout the galaxy, and slug throwers were used for many millennia. Slug throwers are more or less firearms as we know them, using a small explosive charge to propel a projectile to a target. After the common spread of portable blasters, slug throwers were seen as primitive weapons used only on backwater planets. However, slug throwers did have some advantages in a blaster-centric galaxy. Slug throwers could be suppressed fairly easily, making them handy for stealth, whereas a suppressed blaster was a very rare sight. Slug throwers could be outfitted with many varieties of ammunition, including explosive shots, incendiary ammo, and rubber bullets for a non-lethal weapon. Slug throwers were considered to be more durable than blasters as well, with proper maintenance allowing a slug thrower to last for much longer than a blaster would in similar conditions. Lastly, against a lightsaber wielding target, slug thrower rounds would be disintegrated by a lightsaber instead of deflected, removing a common form of counterattack, and a slug would travel much quicker, making it easier to hit the force user. Of course, slug throwers did have drawbacks as well, mainly weight, cost, bullet drop, and penetration power. With the advent of durable materials made into armor, slug throwers were made vastly ineffective. But, since blasters were not stopped at all by this lighter armor, many combatants went without it, making slug throwers potentially viable again. Moving on to melee weapons, there were of course many types of conventional weaponry, including swords, spears, clubs, etc. Perhaps the most popular melee weapon for a good amount of time were vibroblades. These weapons, ranging from a short dagger to larger two-handed versions, featured a sharp blade and an ultrasonic vibration generator in the hilt. This generator caused the blade to vibrate at extremely high speeds, greatly increasing the cutting effectiveness. If there was a chance of encountering a lightsaber user, a vibrosword could be outfitted with a weave of expensive cortosis ore, allowing the blade to withstand lightsaber blows. The greatest risk to a vibroblade user would be electricity, as this could easily connect with the generator and power cell to create a small explosion. Another melee weapon was the electrostaff, generally made of a lightsaber-resistant alloy and with electrified ends. These weapons were generally used specifically for fighting lightsaber wielders. This only covers a portion of the various weaponry in the Star Wars galaxy. Throughout the expanded universe of Star Wars fiction, many more weapons have been created, including needler pistols, rail guns, scatter guns, sonic rifles, and tensor weapons. Well, of course the lightsaber will remain the most iconic weapon within Star Wars. Sometimes, there's no match for a good blaster at your side.